Hello. So this tutorial is about smoothing input or any kind of value that you are using to drive something. So you have something uh, constantly changing value and uh, you want to uh, tweak it. Uh, let You're not hearing it, but I'm hearing it. So here is an example where with the tri trigger I'm controlling the piece with the yellow stuff um, and then this this color here is moving with a delay. And in fact, even the uh, part with the yellow things is, is moving uh, with a little bit of a damping. So how do you take varying input and then smooth it out? So let's have a look. Here is my example project thingy. There is um, Two different uh, blueprints that we are using. One is uh, moving average. We'll we'll check. Uh, I'll explain this first. <laughs> so the uh, red thing is driven my trigger finger. So full on, full off, and then I can move it manually in between. But it's very hectic. It moves very quickly. If you you need it to be something natural, physical, that looks ridiculous. So that's basically was my issue. So then uh, here is uh, two different smooth versions. Uh, there is the green one here that is uh, weighted average. I'll explain it in a second. And then this is a dynamic weighted average with uh, where it's uh, blending the weight between uh, depending on how far off are you from the previous sample so basically you have a sample on a previous frame and then you have a sample in the current frame or let's put it there is the outcome of the <coughs> uh, average tool and then you have the new sample and how far are they uh, you can blend between two values and then that gives you some advantages which I'll go through in a second so here is my uh, actor with uh, different average things. I'm gonna, not gonna explain the whole setup. Um, already made too long version of this video and I'm trying to make it qu quicker now. Um, so I just have three different branches with the uh, three different settings that I'll go through. I'm using a switcher to be choose between those branches. So zero and let's look at this first one. So I'm getting from my um, uh, player pawn I'm getting varying input that I'm multiplying by 50 to get about 50 centimeter movement I'm using this value as the um, new location for the for the cube that spawns spawns the sort of line it's actually spawns cubes but then it draws a line uh, <coughs> moving cubes and then so this is uh, on my example that we're going to check this is the red one so the red one is immediately just taking the trigger input, only just scaling it up by 50. And then the next one is uh, using the weighted moving average float. So here we're getting the same varying input multiplying by 50. Um, and then we're going to get an outcome, storing it as the new value. And then we're bringing that uh, stored, stored sample as the previous sample. So this is how you use it, or at least this is how I got it to work. Um, so you do your thing, you store it, and then you bring it as a previous sample. And then this weighting tells you how much does the new sample affect. If this would be one, it would affect, act exactly like taking the value straight. So that would be exactly the same as I would be just pulling the varying in the, from here straight to the new location. So it's always the latest sample. Uh, it has 100% impact, so it's easiest to think of. This is uh, using 20% of the new sample and 80% is the last outcome. And this, if you think about this for a little bit, then you realize that when there is a big change, that you're jumping from 0 to, let's say, 0.8 here, times 50, I'm not going to do the math, let's say from uh, 0 to 1. And then it's gonna the value here is gonna go from zero to fifty. Um, that jump is is fifty in one frame. So twenty percent of fifty uh, change is gonna be ten. So it's gonna do a 
jump of 10 between those frames. But then when you start getting closer, um, that you're doing a smaller changes, then then the the shift is going to be smaller too. And I'll explain why it's not sometimes nice or you, you don't want it because that means that you have like very uh, smooth easing in and out. So you're going to get faster movements when there is fast changes, but then it's going to be taking uh, its very time to, to actually uh, settle in. Uh, and this is the same with just even smaller value, so it takes even longer to settle. So let's look at this. And hopefully you'll understand better what I mean. So here, red is immediate, green has a delay, and you can see how it, especially towards the end, it's almost there, almost there. Always takes that uh, fair amount of time to settle. And then the blue one is even more extreme. It moves fairly fast in the, in the beginning, but then it takes its time to actually settle uh, close, to, close to the correct value. And it makes sense if you think how it works, but it's not always what you want. So then I have another example. So let's change this to one. So then we're going through this branch. Uh, again, first one is straight input. Second one, I'm using same value for both. The uh, minimum and maximum. Let me step back two seconds. So now we are using dynamic weighted uh, moving average float instead of the weighted moving average float. So the dynamic means that you have two different uh, weighting values that you can blend be between. And the uh, decision for the blending is made based on the distance, max distance. So if you're doing a big jump, so here, if I, in one frame, it, the change uh, from the old value is more than 10, 10 or more, it's gonna use the max weight. And if it's less, it's going to blend towards the minimum weight. I guess if it's zero, then it's minimum weight. And the closer to the 10 it is, then it's the closer to the max weight. Um, so basically, it's, it's uh, r ramping between those two values, depending on the sort of speed, speed uh, threshold that you have set for the value. Um, so here I have the same value for min max. So it's acting exactly like this node would. It's just using 0.25 all the time, regardless. Here, we are using max distance of 10 and two different values. So now, if the distance is uh, less than 10, it's usually using actually a higher weight, which means uh, the sample has bigger impact. It has 75% impact when we are close to zero. So let's see what that does. So now the it's a little bit faster than previous time, but the green one is the um, regular weighted average in practice. And the blue one on the fast bit, it has the same damping, same averaging as the green one. But then towards the end, it switches to uh, to a higher sample value. So then you get, uh, um, you don't get that silly slowdown. So if you're using actual control, it's much more likely that you want something more closer to the uh, blue. Of course, it depends on what you want, but uh, but this way you don't get that that's slow, slow settling in. I wish I could pull my mouse there now, but I can't. Um, that the green one does. With the higher values, it's even more obvious, but, but you can see that the, the blue one has sort of a, a sharp angle, like where it, where it hits the, and it doesn't have to go to the one or, the point is not the, the value being one or zero, those are just easiest for me to settle with the trigger. It's the same thing if I settle somewhere in the middle, it's gonna settle faster compared to the green one. Because, Ah, no, I'm going, losing my mind, because I'm mixing between these values. So, if the distance is less than 10, 
it's going to use the higher weighting. If it's more than 10, then it's using the uh, smaller number and less, less uh, impact. And what this distance is, I already said it, but I tried to say it again so that it makes sense. So it's the distance between what this value is and what this value is, previous round. Hope it makes sense. Um, then my last example is the reverse of that. It just uh, shows how sometimes you might want to do that. So basically here, again, red is the unfiltered. Green one is uh, with a lot of damping. And blue one is with uh, barely any damping except when the distance is a little bit. So basically if I want to move quickly, it allows me to, to get very quickly there. But then when I get start getting closer or move slower, then it, it gives me a, a damped output. So this might be actually nice for something like uh, aiming type of thing where you want to be able to move your gun very quickly, like sort of a fast mouse movement, where you can move almost immediately, but then when you want to start getting the um, high precision, then it smooths it out so that it gets little shakes out or something like that. Hope this makes sense. Um, I was doing these manually on my own uh, before I figured it out, and I did this tutorial because I, I didn't find anybody's tutorial on the topic. I'm not an uh, uh, influencer type, it's not my, uh, I'm not big on tutorials, uh, other people make them better, but uh, if I see something that nobody's done, then I'll try to fill the gaps. Cheers!